inputs here. Okay, so I'm just going to clear the, the inputs. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put in the input range. Okay, I'm going to actually allow there to be labels. Okay, uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to select uh, all of the labels and all of the data values. So I'm going to choose from this cell here all the way down to this cell down here. And what we have, oh, I should actually choose the input range. Okay, so let me choose. That's not for the output range. The input range is going to be the data from cell B3 all the way down to the cell, in this case, the cell E27. Okay. Now, what Excel's Data Analysis Toolpack asks us is, with respect to this particular design, uh, how many, what is the sample size uh, associated with each pairing of the levels of measurement of our independent variables? In other words, how many rows are there per sample? And in this case, we have six rows. There's six measurements in each of the possible groups. Okay. Uh, and then what we have is we have the alpha level. We're going to set the alpha level, just leave it as default as 0 0.05, which is the 5% significance level, which is the probability that we're willing to accept for when we, if we do uh, incorrectly reject the null hypothesis. The null hypothesis being well a little bit different across the three types of uh, the three types of uh, tests that are being run. Uh, for the main effects, the null hypothesis being that the that the the performance on the four hundred meters is is the same across the types of drinks. With respect to exercise, the performance on the four hundred meters is the same, regardless of the of the exercise regime that was undertaken. And finally, with respect to the interaction, that there's actually no interaction between exercise and drink. Okay, so I'm going to specify the output range to be in this sheet. I'll just specify the output range to be, let's say, here. Let's say, let's say G2. And what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to click OK on that. And there's a fair bit of output here. Okay, but let's not let's not uh, worry about that. Okay, so here's all of our output. Okay. Looks something like this. I'll just fix the first column here. Okay. So what we have here is this: is, is we have a number of summary tables. Okay, uh, where we compare or we associate each level of measurement on our independent variables. So passive with Diet Coke, passive with regular, passive with Red Bull, leisurely with Diet, leisurely with re re regular Coke, and so on and so forth. So the first summary table is dealing with the passive level associated with exercise, and the three different, uh, I suppose, levels of measurement associated with the type of drink that could be drank. And what you can actually see is that for each group, when we compared passive with Diet Coke, there were six observations. Passive with regular, there were six observations. Passive with Red Bull, there were six observations. And uh, what we get here is we get the sums of all the values across them. But more importantly, what we're in interested in is we're interested in the average. Yeah? So with respect to passive, and Diet Coke, the average performance for those six participants was 52 seconds. Regular Coke and Passive was 55 seconds. Regular, sorry, Red Bull and Passive was 66 seconds. And it's a similar, similar sort of output here in relation to leisurely and each of our levels of measurement on the drink, moderate exercise and each levels on the drink, and vigorous and each levels on the drink. So we have one, two, three, we have four summary tables. And then we have an overall table that is comparing, I suppose, with all the observations pulled together uh, across each of our levels, okay, uh, with respect to the drink category. Okay. So, what are we interested in here? Well, we're interested in, I suppose, uh, we're interested in, in, in three things. Uh, we're interested in sample, columns, and interaction. Okay. So... Let's try to let's try to figure out what's going on here. Okay, uh, well the sample is by default has got to do with the level of measurements associated with the variable that's listed here across our rows. Okay, so with respect to sample, I suppose this really should be the exercise if that makes sense. Okay, so this is our exercise. Okay, so this is exercise here exercise our sample and the columns okay well the columns are got to do with the type of drink that was drank okay so the columns represent the type of drink so i'll just change columns here to be drink so that this is a little bit more informative for us okay so each one of these rows now represents the results of a single factor ANOVA okay well this is a single factor of ANOVA across exercise levels this is a single factor of ANOVA across 
uh, drink levels and finally this is the single factor this is an ANOVA yeah where we consider the differences across all the possible pairings of the levels of exercise with 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 drink okay but let's interpret our first one so the first question is whether there's a significant difference okay in the performance of participants depending on the type of exercise regime that you undertake is there a difference in the performance of these guys here the passive guys compared to these guys here the leisurely guys or even possibly in with comparison to the moderate exercise regime guys uh, or even possibly with the vigorous exercise regime guys okay so the question is are any of them possible pairings different to each other or any particular combination of levels uh, different to each other across all those pro uh, possible levels and once again our null hypothesis is that there's no difference the alternative is that there's a significant difference, yeah, or that there is a difference. Once again, like in our previous